All right, what's going on, everybody? Today we're out here riding the FJ09. Thought I'd give you a little bit of a uh, you know first-hand experience what it's like. I've been trying to sort out my audio, get my microphone and my helmet so I can talk to you while I'm riding, but it's just becoming very difficult. And, uh, it's just not the vibe. So voiceover it is. First gear feels like it'll reach all the way to 100 kilometers an hour, which might make for some good draggy times. Between messing around with the mic and GoPro, I forgot to do up my helmet. Let's see if I can get it done. It's light. Okay, don't drop the gloves. Got it. Nice. Oh, we got time. Easy. See, over these patches of pavement, the FZ6 felt rough and crashy, but the FG09 feels supple. You would think a softer, more compliant bike would flounder in the corners, but the damping is well-tuned. The suspension can absorb the bumps, but maintain composure in the corners. I'm still trying to figure out where my butt likes to be on the seat, because when I sit more forward on the bike, my arms can bend more, which makes my triceps more comfortable, but then my butt isn't very well positioned on the seat. But maybe my arms are just sore because I was training arms yesterday in the gym. <laughs> oh well, I guess we'll find out in time. Maybe I could bring a bar a little more forward with a bracket or something and adjust the body position, but it's okay for now. So, as it goes for foot space, I can get both my toes to the ground. I am 5'9", I have a 31 inch inseam, and I can just reach the ground. I don't know this square body down now this is a little move I picked up from Indonesia. Coming from riding in Asia makes western style traffic look lethargic and so lane focused by comparison. There's something to be said for the visibility you have on an upright bike like the FJ. Young riders always want a GSX-R or an R6, but besides those bikes being very fast, the bikes ultimately limit the rider's ability to interpret their surroundings and keep an eye on traffic because they're so tucked in just to ride the bike. One odd thing is that this bike has a wicked rattle when clutched out in neutral. I've read a bit about it and I understand the CP3 engine in this bike has a noisy clutch. And hearing my own bike, I get why people comment on this. I hope mine doesn't explode in the near future. Ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived at Van Cam camera service, but how will the FJ handle a couple U-turns? Flawlessly, of course. Oh man, it's starting to rain. Hopefully it doesn't pick up. I looked right at my rain jacket right before I left the house today and thought, nah, I'll be fine. Yet, here we are. Sheesh, this RS6 though. Damn drivers asleep at the wheel. Well, let's get away from him. Standard mode feels good, overall the bike is more torquey than a 600cc 4 cylinder like the FZ6. If you're all about getting that front wheel in the air though, A mode is for you. Switching to B mode really slows down how fast the throttle opens and the torque ramps in. In a way, switching to B mode makes the FJ09 feel more like an FZ6 with its top end power band. Well thanks for coming along for the ride on the FJ. I find this time of year the hardest to come up with topics to make videos on because up until today I've had the bike in storage and I've been driving the BMW. And in a good way and a bad way also, nothing's really been going wrong with the BMW so there hasn't been any struggle to document. I've got lots of plans for the FJ09 for the summer now that the bike is insured, I just have to get the time to work on these ideas. If there's anything you want to see me do on the FJ09 this summer, let me know in a comment down below. Thanks for watching and as always, have a good day.